Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. The stage is set for unbelievable things to happen. I would love to fast forward just even just 12 months from now, just one full year, and take a look back at the, the price history for the entire crypto asset class and see what the hell actually happened. But I am anticipating there are going to be fireworks and I'm going to share with you a number of reasons why. And at the core of this is something that perhaps... It was unexpected by most. You look every single, uh, every single rally that we've we've had in the crypto asset class, which has only been in existence for about twelve years. Every single one uh, was led by retail speculators, and for the first time, you have you have a, a, a bull market led by institutional purchases, which is significant because that's where the major, the real big money is coming from. And I don't think that people were anticipating that. People were anticipating, uh, it will be, of course, we all have an understanding of market cycles, unless you're new, in which case, uh, stick around. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, people were anticipating certainly a, a rebound, a bull market at some point. But, uh, you know, the thought was that it would probably continue to be driven again by the retail side. It's fantastic that it's not. Because, it, the, I'm going to illustrate to you, we have, we're talking about like, public pension funds money coming like that type of institutional money not just a hedge funds uh, it, you'll see I've, I've got a few stories on that front to share with you and the reason this is exciting is it could potentially result in a ridiculous market cap relative to what otherwise would have occurred during this market cycle we've already broken a trillion dollars we're a little below it as i record this but we've uh, we've broken through that could we have a multi-trillion dollar market cap for the asset class this cycle? And it's kind of an interesting thought here. And so that's why I'm not dismissing anybody that's talking about Bitcoin going into, you know, the three or four hundred thousand dollar range, whatever. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm not going to outright dismiss it because the amount of huge money coming in is just mind boggling to me. And so for, for we as XRP holders... Just understand, the higher Bitcoin goes because of all this, the higher altcoins, including XRP, will go. And so it's worth being aware of all of this. Now, um, I do want to be clear that I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. Um, I just think it's fun to talk about this stuff as an enthusiast, and I run this YouTube channel purely as a hobby. That is all that it is, just in full transparency. I don't want anybody to think I'm someone or something that I'm not. Um, and so uh, as I record, this XRP is just a hair shy of 30 cents. Bitcoin, a few hundred bucks shy of $35,000 market cap for the asset class. $943 billion in Bitcoin dominance at 68.36%. And future people, one year from now, if you could just hit me up and let me know what the hell happened. Because I'm just sitting here, January 11th, 2021, wondering what it's all going to look like. But it's going to be a fun ride. Like there's so much, re so many reasons to be genuinely optimistic. I do believe that. And I want to briefly highlight this as well. This is a piece from you today titled, This Iconic Bitcoin Tweet is now 12 years old. It's the first tweet in the world about Bitcoin. Look at this. 12 years ago, Hal Finney, one of the most important people in the history of Bitcoin, published the very first tweet related to the world's largest cryptocurrency. And what was the tweet? Running Bitcoin. That's it. January 11th, 2009, it just said running Bitcoin, Hal Finn. And some people think that uh, that he is Satoshi Nakamoto. They kind of covered it real briefly here. Uh, in October 2009, Finney disclosed that he had been diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease or uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. After a five-year battle with the disease, he passed away on August 28th, 2014. There's a ton of speculation as to whether or not Finney himself created the cryptocurrency due to the timing of Satoshi's disappearance and the fact that he lived in the same town as Dorian Nakamoto, the Japanese-American man who was misidentified as the man behind Bitcoin by a Newsweek journalist. Interesting. I mean, maybe we're never going to know for sure, but that is something. Regardless, though, either way, there you go. The very first Bitcoin tweet ever on the cesspool that is Twitter. Uh, take a look at this headline. I had to mention this also. So Brad Garlinghouse, he tweeted out um, uh, Ripple's all-star engineering team continues to grow. Thrilled to welcome a dev as our new senior vice president of engineering. So they made a new hire. And it's um, a, uh, an individual who'd worked at Amazon leading uh, their teams at a high level for like 15 years. And so there was this piece written by Dev 
uh, titled, uh, which came out today, Accelerating Financial Inclusion Through Technology. And here's the headline we got from Cointelegraph. <laughs> what the hell is this crap? XRP tumbles despite former Amazon exec joining Ripple as engineer lead. So I'm, I'm sorry. Can we, can we can just pause for a moment here? Turner Wright, who wrote this for Cointelegraph. Turner, let me ask him. Are you supposing it would be reasonable to believe that Ripple hires one employee out of their roughly 500 employee team and that's supposed to impact XRP markets the world over? Who is this guy? Like, is it, it's like they just hired Jesus. Like, what are, you, what are you talking about here? This is just absurd on its face, and I had to kind of chuckle at this. It's just it's just pure silliness. And, you know, to take it a step further, and I, I just, um, it's silly to me that this is the case, but I don't think most people could explain what it is that the cryptocurrencies they're investing in are alleged to be capable of doing. And, and it's just speculators. It's humans acting irrationally, which I kind of begrudge at times, but I just accept it. I don't control that. But I don't even think most people that purchase XRP could articulate how Ripple's positioning it as a bridge currency. And so much less would they care about an individual person being hired, even if they used to work at Amazon. What the hell? <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. I just had to chuckle out a little bit. It's out of my system now. We're good. Take a look at this though, from the Daily Hodl. Pension funds actively investing in Bitcoin through institutional crypto titan grayscale. Well, how about that? And by the way, the, the, um, the first public pension funds to ever invest directly into a cryptocurrency, in this case it, it was Bitcoin, occurred with Morgan Creek Digital, uh, which is run by Mark Yusko and Anthony Pompliano, among others. Uh, it happened, I believe it was, I want to say February of 2019. And so it's not like the floodgates opened with that, but that was the first instance where publicly a public pension said, yeah, we just did this. They just purchased Bitcoin. When, when I saw that, I was like, oh, holy hell. Like, that's kind of a historic moment in my mind. I was like, that's a big freaking deal, right? Uh, public pension money flowing directly into Bitcoin and also cryptocurrency companies. They, they did invest directly in companies as well, but directly into Bitcoin. It just kind of blew my mind. And what we're seeing now is that we're, 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 I suppose you could probably phrase it as an exponential increase in this type of activity. Pension funds are beginning to invest in Bitcoin according to the institutional cryptocurrency asset management firm Grayscale. Grayscale CEO Michael Sunenshin, or Shine, I'm not sure how to say it, uh, tells Bloomberg that the coveted market segment is joining hedge funds and endowments in gaining exposure to Bitcoin through the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. And here's a quote. We've started to see participation not just from the hedge fund segment, which we've long seen participation uh, participation from, but now it's recently from institutions, pensions, and endowments. The sizes of allocations they are making are growing rapidly as well. Which is again why <laughs> this is why I keep making the point. Bitcoin leads the market fine, fine, and maybe it always will. I don't know, but there's only roughly 1.8 million Bitcoin liquid on the market, so you're going to have a supply crisis. I mean, not that you'll, we won't ever get to a point where, like, you cannot purchase Bitcoin, but it's going to be worth so much that just the concept of uh, the everyday man being able to, to hold one whole Bitcoin, it's just, it's not going to be a thing anymore. It's not going to be realistic. And so you're talking about 1.2% of humans on the planet ever having at any point in time held a single cryptocurrency. 1.2%, that, that's the estimate that I've seen. And you already have prices at these levels and there's not much Bitcoin left already. So where do you think this is going? And so if you keep seeing an exponential increase in adoption and you end up seeing even more publicly traded companies jump in and more high net worth individuals, millionaires and billionaires, uh, there's only ever 21 million, like there's more millionaires out there than there are Bitcoins. Like you, there's not even enough Bitcoin for every millionaire to have one Bitcoin. Like, are you getting this? Like, this is a scarce asset and it's driving up the price. It's supply and demand dynamics. And XRP, along with every other altcoin, is going to follow the market. That's it. And I get it with the scary news of the SEC. Fine, I'll acknowledge that XRP is riskier to hold. I'm not going to just, you know, this is not a hype channel. I'm not going to pretend like everything's all sunshine and rainbows and puppies and ice cream all the time. I want to be a realist about this. I'm, I'm still absolutely Mr. XRP bull for many reasons. 
I, I'm still like my, my conviction is not shaken in this. I think that things are going to work out with the SEC and Ripple. But even despite the recent drop in, in price for people that were spooked and wanted to get out, and I don't blame anybody that got out or reduced their holding seriously. I, I get it. It's more risky. It was scary. Still is scary. Fine. But uh, after they got out, everybody else that was still in, they're just like, okay, yeah. And they, a lot, so many people saw it as an opportunity. And that's why you saw with Grayscale, the last day of 2020, an institutional purchase by Grayscale of over 12 million XRP. And that was based on their customer demand because their customers are accredited investors, high, so high net worth individuals. And after everybody panic sold after the scary SEC news, the high net worth individuals saw that as an opportunity and they purchased an, a metric F word ton of XRP and closed out the year. And so it just it's the same thing. Look, guys, it's it's not the market moves not sufficiently because of, because of fundamentals, which is something that when I entered it, just kind of like when I learned that it blew my mind. I was because, look, if, if the market were full of nothing but but moon Lambos, me, it, 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 the market wouldn't move. Because I don't, I don't emotionally buy and sell. So it's good that these people are out there that do this or else we wouldn't have volatility and we need volatility in order for things to go up. But I'm not going to behave like that. And it's it's just ridiculous. So yes, I admit not enough people care about fundamentals. But so what's happening here is that, you know, which, there's been a transfer. There's been a transfer of XRP from weak hands into institutional purchasers and high net worth individuals that um, have a different outlook than the typical retail investor. That's what happened. So the rich people getting your XRP on the cheap, that's what happened. That's absolutely what happened, in my humble opinion. And so I didn't sell a damn single XRP because I, I what what I thought would happen has played out to this point. The price went down. And uh, you, we, we have seen a bit of a rebound. And so it did get pretty damn low, down to 17 cents or so. But we did see a rebound. And... Um, and, and, and <laughs> Now XRP, it's just moving in tandem with the market like it was before. And so I still suspect, even with the scary news, you could you could still certainly have uh, some tremendous bull activity, parabolic run perhaps even, with XRP, which again is certainly, I know I said this, I'm going to say it again, it's not financial advice. I don't know if this is going to happen. Um, I suspect it's the case that it, it certainly could, right? And so that's what I'm betting on. That's my bet. I, I, I believe that that's what's going to happen. I think humans are going to keep acting like humans. And and so think about it. So here's here's the way it'll work out. Everybody that was going to get shaken out, they're shaken out. Just about 100% of them. And the people that were confident, they propped the price back up. You know, the high net worth individuals, institutional purchase, all that. And at some point, it's going to start pumping. And you know what humans do when a coin starts to pump a little bit? When you start to get green candles? Dumb money comes in and chases it. It happens to every cryptocurrency. And so S-word coins are going to pump, and you don't think that XRP is going to pump when people see the shiny green candle? <laughs> Give me a break. So outside of any sort of additional tremendously scary news, uh, which I can't even imagine, like this is the worst news that could have happened, and it's still here. So just I don't know what it would be. Um, and on the flip side, if we do get some sort of clarity surrounding XRP, like there's a settlement and that news breaks, which which we would not know is coming, by the way, it would just be totally random if it does happen. And it could happen in the coming months for all I know. I'm not sure. But if it does happen, I suspect you're going to see a reverse of what happened when the scary news happened and you're going to see a bunch of people rush into XRP. And I don't know if that's going to happen. And if it's going to happen, I don't know when. And so I don't want to reduce any of my exposure to XRP, period at all i'm standing firm and if i'm wrong fine maybe i lose everything but that's not what i suspect will happen and i'm a big boy i, I acknowledge i could and that's the risk that i'm choosing to take you got to make your own decision whether you want to buy or sell or hold it's it's totally your call i'm not i'm never going to encourage anyone to do anything right? but uh just just remove emotion from it and make informed decision that's that's the only thing that i su could suggest um and so um let me move down a little bit here uh, I think I wanted to jump to the next one, probably. Or No, actually, this is interesting, too. Let me read this before I hop to the next piece. Uh, numbers from the Intergovernmental Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OSED, showed there was about $18.75 trillion held in U.S. pension funds in 2019. So you can imagine, even if you just get like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5% of that flowing in you get this multiplier effect it's not that that amount of dollars flows in and that's what the market cap is no 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 it'd be that times a multiplier 
Okay, because that means that once that's taken out, when this is purchased over the counter, because you you, you know the everyday Joe Schmo retail investor, they're not going to see that on spot exchanges. They're just going to suddenly um, be fighting over less Bitcoin because there will be less available, and that will rocket up the price. And it'll be a multiplier effect. So like if a trillion dollars comes in, if a trillion actual dollars comes into the space, it's not going to be this the market cap that we have today plus one trillion. It's going to have a multiplier effect because it's going to result in people bidding the price up. So I mean, if, if that much money came in, my gosh, I would certainly suspect a, a multi-trillion dollar um, market cap uh, j just from that new money coming in, you know. So it's, it's going to be hell, right? And so if it, I don't know if it's going to happen to what degree it's going to, you know, where it's going to top off this market cycle. But suffice it to say, substantially higher than where we are today, I suspect. We'll, we'll see. And then there's this. From the Daily Hoddle. Institutional rocket fuel could soon boost Ethereum, says macro investor Dan Tapiero. And so fine, um, the, the thrust of the article is about Ethereum, but there's an awesome quote in here that kind of paints a picture about what's happening happening with the like the broader uh, crypto asset class in terms of uh, price action. Take a look at this. Uh, prominent global macro investor Nan Tapiero says Ethereum is poised to surge as a ways, wave of institutional investors set their sights on the second largest crypto asset by market cap. On an episode of The Breakdown with Nathaniel Whitmore, Tapiero says that the amount of stimulus pumped into the money supply this year has transformed the financial landscape. And so take a look at this. This is another reason that uh, we could see some incredible price action for the crypto asset class, certainly including XRP, in my humble opinion. Here's the quote, though. I think investors need to really think in a different framework. I think the framework is still developing, but almost anything that you used to think, I think, that you have to think has now changed. Bottom line, if you add up all of the fiscal and monetary stimulus that was done and try to put a value on it this year... You're looking at an amount over $30 trillion of stimulus was put into the world economy. That's one and a half the size of the U.S. economy injected in the world. So I don't think we even understand yet what the ramifications are. And exactly. And so it's it's not just that because more money is printed, it can flow in. It's this, it's this fear, whether it's justified or not. And I mean... It's a reasonable concern, I'd say. The debasement of the United States dollar and other fiat currencies the world over, the potential for an increase in inflation, that's, that's a reasonable fear. We'll see to what degree that happens in the coming years. I'm not anticipating hyperinflation anytime soon, but you could see an increase, certainly. And even if uh, even if you didn't, even if it just uh, trotted along at uh, the regular whatever 2% or whatever inflation normally is annually, you, you still have people that are fearful of this and they're changing the way that they're investing and many, as a result, are jumping into crypto. This is this is verifiably true. You can think about publicly traded company MicroStrategies, and this this is like the pandemic, everything, and the debasement of the currency. This is what prompted them ultimately. They had a huge cash reserves, and they're like, "Holy hell, it's like an ice cube that's melting, losing purchasing power. We have to put it somewhere." And so uh, they got their team together, and they did a ton of research. And they decided Bitcoin was the best place to put it. And to this point, they've now invested over $1 billion since September of 2020 into Bitcoin. It's because of this. There are so many macro factors at play that are leading to this. It's like the perfect confluence of stupidness resulting in, in a tremendous bull rally. So, like, I think we're just getting started here. And it's very exciting, which to me, like, I, I'm just continuing to build up my positions, I stopped purchasing XRP because my bags are full. I'm, I'm good on XRP, believe me. A dollar cost averaged in for three years and placed a, a few, a number of bigger orders uh, towards, uh, you know, the latter half of 2020. And so for me now, I just want to diversify further, but I'm, I'm most excited about XRP. I'm, you know, there's a reason this is an XRP centric channel, but I, of course I do talk about other crypto related stuff. I'm not going to only talk about XRP here, but yeah, so at this point, I'm just excited to diversify and Really can't wait to see how this year unfolds. I know we just had our first major pullback this calendar year and uh, did not emotionally impact me whatsoever. These things do not. I know that it's going to shake out some uh, newer people, but not your boy Moon Lambo. I've been around this block uh, enough times to know that this is par for the course. That's it for this one. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time. To the moon, Lambo.